Hello and welcome to my first YouTube video blog. I'm going to do this one on the Pelham. I'll be introducing you to some points, literally, as well as other aspects to it. And hopefully you'll find out what links this and this. Before I give a brief overview of what the Pelham was, it's worth perhaps thinking about the history behind it. The idea of picking up a stick and throwing it at someone isn't exactly new and it was, certainly wasn't anything original by Roman standards. What the Romans were very good at was taking that idea and evolving it into something really, really technical and something that by the end of it, by the time that we've got this piece, which is a replica of one that dated from the first century B stroke AD, was a very, very good piece of kit, a very effective weapon at what it intended to do. The earliest reference, or defined reference, we have to a peeler is at the Battle of Panormus in 250 BC. Panormus is what we now call Palermo. And the Romans were being besieged by the Carthaginians with their brand new weapon, the elephant. The Romans were in a lot of bother. The elephants were undoubtedly scary and causing a lot of trouble. And the Romans had one easy way of dealing with them. They happened upon by chance. The Carthaginians, very new to using elephants at that time, brought them too close to the Roman walls and the Romans unleashed a hail of these pila at the elephants which in turn routed, crushing their own troops and deserting the battlefield. After the Marian reforms at the end of the 2nd century BC, the Romans started to use pila as a standardised piece of kit. Before it was used by a couple of the troop types of what was known as the Polybian Roman army. But obviously Marius decided that this was worth using and standardising and it's something he did and we'll look now exactly at what the modern peeler as it was became. This is the base of the peelum and as you can see it's wood with a metal point. The wooden part adds the mass and this is the thing, and this is the weight, this is the energy, this is the, this is the engine. When the peelum arrives at its target this is why it makes the force and the impact that it does, because it's carrying this sort of weight. The end is a bit curious, and I think perhaps it's a nod towards the earlier tradition of spear warfare, where you had these ends on the spears which served one particularly cruel purpose. The Greeks called them lizard killers, and the idea was that if you're holding this upright, you could take out anyone on the floor below you. You didn't need to bend down, bend over, or make any other necessary movements. You could simply use your spear to finish anyone off. Now we move to the middle. This is the part where obviously you've got a hand grip and it's very, very nicely balanced. You've got a nice point of balance here. But you've also got where the iron shank met the wood. And this was one piece that was slotted in and then it was fixed with rivets. Now according to rumour and some of the sources I've heard, Marius insisted that rivets weren't metal, they were wooden. The idea being when this was thrown, the impact would shatter these, meaning the peeling would break and therefore it couldn't be thrown back. This is the business end of the pelum, or as MTV Cribs would have it, this is where the magic happens. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it's got a very long slender neck. This long, long slender neck had two key functions. The first was that it would fail, it would buckle upon impact, and that meant it could be picked up and used again. The second was that it had a very long reach. When this went through a shield, it would find whoever was behind it. And if you can imagine it, the shank ending there, you would only have this much movement. Now, you've got all of this range of movement, and this will come and find you. And then, of course, we move to the point, which is literally the point. The point of the peeling really gives away what it was all about. This was armor piercing, and this is going to go through any kind of shield or obstruction it came up against, combined with the slender neck, combined with the mass generated from its weight of about three and a half pounds. This is going to punch through and cause injury and get people behind things that they probably felt safe behind. The shield you can see over in the distance is at 15 feet and that's 15 meters and that represents a legionary at about what we call the effective range of a throw. The pelum traveling from that distance is, if it hits you, going to cause you a lot of problems. It's thought of that the first two ranks of Roman legionaries will unleash the pelum and then make the charge, an organized steady charge across that 15 meters at 50 feet of effective range before engaging the enemy. If this didn't hit you and it hit your shield, you would find your shield would be pretty much useless. In AD 58, the Romans engaged the Helvetii, and the Helvetii seemed to have had some sort of shield wall that had overlapping shields. From Caesar's report, we know these went through the shields, pinning some of them together, making them completely useless. Suddenly, the Helvetii had no defense against the oncoming Roman soldiers. 
The peeler is therefore a really good shot weapon. If it doesn't kill you, it's going to disable your defences, certainly going to disorientate you. However, and quite ironically, the most infamous use of the peeler wasn't as a missile weapon. The year was 48 BC and the place was fastless. Caesar was meeting Pompey in a seminal battle and it's the peelum which won Caesar the day. In 48 BC, Caesar lined up against Pompey in a battle to decide which direction the growing Roman state would take. This is the battlefield at Pharsalus in a really, really basic setup. What we've got here is Pompey in the white, Caesar playing black, and you've got the infantry facing each other, cavalry facing each other. On this side here, securing this flank, was a river. And the big problem for Caesar was the cavalry. Pompey had a lot more of them. Pompey had around 7,000. Caesar just the one. The obvious tactic for Pompey was to drive Caesar's cavalry off, attack in the flank and roll the line up. Caesar knew that that was exactly what Pompey would do, so he came up with quite an ingenious thing to counter it. Taking men from his line, he created a second line behind his cavalry. Legionaries, but not legionaries in the traditional sense, legionaries that were going to use their pilum a spear. These became spearmen. As Pompey's cavalry attacked, initially knocking Caesar's cavalry back, they were met by these impromptu spearmen. Horses are very intelligent creatures, but even the dumbest creature doesn't like pointy sticks. And you can imagine the horror that these cavalrymen now face, and indeed the horses, as the spearmen attack them with the short spears, which effectively what the peeler became. The cavalry, needless to say, routed, and this left Pompey's flank horribly exposed. The cavalry swept in on the side, joined with the legionaries, who presumably would now become nord normal legionaries, throwing the peeler in from the side, and the cavalry attacking from the side and back. What you might imagine happened, happened. Pompey's line folded. Caesar won the day, and it was all down to the peeler. So there we go, that was my guide to the Pelum. Now for me, this symbolises the Roman army brilliantly. It was mass produced, it showed they had huge resources. It was also an existing technology that they took and they made very specialised for their own purposes, yet paradoxically could be used in a number of different environments. So I hope you enjoyed this, and you can see my details below. If you've got any ideas or comments, please be nice. And even if you've got any suggestions for future articles or blogs, I'll be happy to look at them. And from both of us, thanks for watching.